Hi and welcome to the third of our uh, some kind of Star Trek visual logs um, and as promised via Instagram earlier on today uh, the one we're going to be looking at today is the attack wing uh, Ning Tao uh, which is taken from the episode uh, Once More Into the Breach from season 7 of Deep Space Nine. So as you can see it's a Klingon bird of prey from the Brel class uh, so it's the same as the General Trang Bird of Prey from Star Trek VI, which was released as part of Wave VI from memory. Um, this is one of the more detailed miniatures that um, Eagle Mo sorry, uh, Whiz Kids have produced. So as you can see, it's got a quite a, a shiny gleam to the, the green paint. We've got a two-tone paint scheme, it's so got the light green and dark green on the wings. Uh, more detail on the veins and the fins uh, around the wing mechanism plus the deflector grid shield piece around the nose uh, has also been detailed in that sort of red paint colour and a little bit of detail on the engine at the rear underneath as you'll have seen just then you've got the, the red colouring uh, on the wings and there is a little bit of detailing on the guns as well so actually in comparison to the Prometheus which um, we reviewed earlier in the month a much much better miniature just to give you a bit of a comparison against that Chang's Bird of Prey um, there you go and as you can see the colouring on these two is very very different also you've got the wing position in Chang's which is in the flight mode whereas with the Ning Tao it's in that attack mode position a lot duller paint scheme on Chang's Bird of Prey from uh, from the Undiscovered Country um, but and to be honest I actually do prefer it I just think this is the, the Ning Tao is perhaps a little bit more pimped um, why they've chosen to do a different paint scheme on this Bird of Prey I'm not totally sure but let's take a closer look at the ship itself. So alignment's pretty decent on the model. Stats wise, um, let's just pop her to the top corner up here. Stats wise, it is absolutely identical to that Chang's Bird of Prey from Star Trek VI. So as we can see from the cards that we've got here, um, it's got a, a four for your weapons, a one on the shields, a one on the uh, defensive, uh, three on your hull and three on the shields, which is absolutely identical to what you would have had with the the, the uh, Chang's Bird of Prey from Star Trek VI. Movement again is absolutely identical. It's exactly the same card, in fact, um, except that it's got Brow class rather than saying Klingon Bird of Prey. And the generic uh, card that you do get if you want to play it as a just a general Brow class Bird of Prey, you are losing one shield point. So let's just move those out of the way. And take a look at the captain options. So you do get uh, an interesting array of command options with the Ning Tao. You get two versions of core, one of which is from the episode Once More Into the Breach. The second uh, or the earlier version is from the original series episode uh, Errand of Mercy. So what you do see with this ship is that there it is either very offensive or very defensive. So with the elder core what you're actually doing is turning your ship into effectively a, a, um, a weapons attraction device um, in that um, all the enemy ships have to fire on that ship if you choose to use the core action. Um, with the younger core, who does have the better stats, as you can tell, so he's got a, an 8 um, on his captain skill, um, and he does cost 5 on the, um, the SP. Um, while attacking, you can select any number of your attack dice, um, and re-roll those dice um, depending on the number of non-disabled crew upgrades you've got. In fact, you only get one crew upgrade with the ship, which we'll come to shortly. Um, so they're pretty decent cards. Can't, this, this Elder Core is quite an interesting card because effectively it means that you can use this to regroup the other ships perhaps in your fleet uh, and, and draw the fire away from them, in fact, as Core did in the episode itself. So again, as with the Prometheus, it's great to see they're actually looking at um, pulling the, the character traits that we've seen uh, onto the cards themselves. Your other three command options, um, you do get generic Klingon. There we go, which is wonderful. And the other two options you get are Worf and Martok. So this Worf, his stats are actually slightly lower than you would have got with the Martok with the Negvas. That Martok, as I'll just pop over here just for a bit of a comparison, that Martok had a, um, a captain rank of a captain skill of eight and cost five, whereas the Martok that you get with the Ning Tao uh, is a seven on the captain skill and only costs a four. Both of them still have that elite action option should you want to use that. So with, as we said with the previous cards, this is a very offensive and defensive ship, uh, as you would expect perhaps with the Klingons. So Martok here um, gains attack dice but loses defense 
um, in a single round, whereas Wharf um, does actually increase your defense options. So it's again, it's it's quite an Im an imbalanced chip if you start looking at using the cards within the pack themselves. So just pop those away. As usual, you do get the the two options with the stand. So I'm just going to pop the uh, the bird of prey onto the stand now. So as always, your your options for the ship are your sensor echo, cloaking, target lock, and your evasive maneuvers. As we've seen there, we've already seen we've got the four ship stats. What I'm going to do is uh, just keeping in with the episode itself. We're going to put core on as our captain. So let's just pop the stand on. As usual, pretty decent fit, uh, and because they've now realised that uh, they needed a bit thinner cardboard for these. They do fit in pretty nicely, as you can see there. Let's pop the uh, the bird of prey onto the top, and there we go. Just a slight off centre with this one, not quite as bad as we had with the Prometheus last time, but we'll pop that just to the side here, so we can still see him. Okay, so let's take a look uh, in a bit more detail at the rest of the ship. So we've had a look at the captains, um, we've had a look at the uh, the ship itself. Our one crew option that we did talk about is this one, it's Darok. So once you've performed, uh, you can use him to perform an additional action as a free action. So you can effectively take anything you want for one turn, but you do lose the option of this card. Again, he's a, uh, an option of a 5 SP for your ship, and he can only be bought for, as you would expect, Klingon ships. Moving on, there are two uh, tech options with this ship. We have the Tractor Beam which allows you to, um, for every ship within range one, um, you roll two attack dice, and for every one of your damage uh, results, that ship rolls one less defense dice in its next attack against it, which is quite a quite a useful one um, that you're going to be using to, to try and lower um, your opposition's defenses and, and make them a bit more vulnerable. Again, with the Bird of Prey, you're more than likely to be using these as your somewhat like your cannon fodder, um, given their speed and their defenses, and then let things like your uh, Vorcha and your Negvar classes go in um, to, to finish off the job. The other option you've got with the pack is the inverse graviton burst. I really like this one um, because it means that any ship within a range one to three is going to end up with an auxiliary power token on it by the end of that turn, which means that in the next turn it can't use any of its actions. So this is a really nice card to, to use within the pack. Again, it's that five upgrade uh, SP to uh, include it with your ship. But I really like this as a feature. Uh, certainly something that can then play havoc with the opposition given the, in the next round. Your two uh, weapon options that come with the Ning Tao are your uh, strafing attack, which uh, immediately allows you to ta target two other ships after attacking, uh, which are within range one, and make an additional three dice attack against each of those ships, uh, but they don't even need to be within your forward firing arc. Interestingly enough, you can't do it if you've just done a full stir movement, but uh, I guess that's down to uh, if you've used, if you've gained any auxiliary power tokens through that manoeuvre. Really nice card, that giving you a triple attack, but it is reliant on you already being in quite a dangerous position and very, very close to your uh, your enemy ships uh, with that card. But it does allow you to use to that three attacking dice. Photon Torpedo is pretty much a standard card in any of the packs that you get now. Within that range, two to three, again, using the five dice, can be used from your forward or rear arcs. Nice thing with the, the Ning Tao, it does have the rear arc and the forward firing arc, so you're going to be using that, I would suspect, quite a lot. I rarely don't um, operate a Photon Torpedo option on any of the ships, purely because it gives you that, that rearward firing option. Um, nice one with this one. Again, you can convert one of your um, battle station results uh, into a critical damage result, which is fantastic. So, the only other option we just need to look at with the ship is the elite action. And this one is called Live Long, Long Live the Empire. So when attacking with your primary weapon during the roll di attack dice step, you can discard it, add up to another three attack dice to the attack, um, but uh, you have to suffer one damage uh, to either your shields or your hull for each additional dice that you use. So if you use the three, you are going to be looking at living, using three, um, losing, well, 
gaining three damage points to your ship, which could mean you're pretty much out of the fight. As we saw, this is a really strange um, ship, the way that they've built this pack. You're either going to be going quite offensive or very defensive, but the defensive options really do mean that, that you are not likely to come out of this fight with this with the Ning Tao intact. Again, really driving home that it is as close to the, the ship as it was in the episode, which is a really key thing with this pack that they've really gone to town on making it as realistic, quote unquote, um, to the to the series itself. Finally, uh, really rounding off and re-emphasizing exactly what we've said about this ship all the way through, uh, is the mission which is called Little Long Live the Empire. Oddly enough, um, this one the result either means that uh, you, if you're the Klingon player and you're playing with the Ning Tao. Uh, you win if you complete four waves of the game and you're still alive or if you've destroyed all of your Dominion opposition that are coming after you. If you're the Dim Dominion player, you've just got to destroy the Ning Tao before the end of that fourth wave. In comparison, uh, this is probably as good as the Prometheus. Certainly got some really interesting options here uh, which would turn this into a, a ticking time bomb within the game. It is one of those things, that it's a bit of a, a buckaroo um, ship, if you're asking my opinion on it, um, in that you have no idea when it's going to go off uh, because of the features that you've got included within the pack. So a really nice one, um, certainly one of the better miniatures that they've released within the later wings, and certainly a ship that I would be putting into uh, my Klingon forces uh, should I choose to take them out against uh, any of the opposition uh, that I'm fine these days. But yeah, one of the better packs, a really nice addition through Wave 15. Uh, and we will be covering Wave 16 shortly. So if you'd like to uh, give us a thumbs up and let me know what you think of the video. If there's anything you want to ask about Attack Wing or any of the things that we've covered within some kind of Star Trek, uh, please drop us a line. Transfer complete.